Today's topic is mini painting essentials, starting from scratch. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome once again to Way Pan. I'm Cal. And I'm Sunny. Today we'll be covering the tools you need to begin your miniature painting journey. For long-time viewers, you may recognize this title as revamp of starting from scratch, because it is. There is additional information we needed to add, primarily the reasoning behind the choices and some different options. Straight up, we're going to tell you the tools that you are going to need. Then we are going to go into the reasoning behind why you need them and some additional tips. Those items are... Three brushes, a small, medium and large brush. Size 0, 1 and 2. Dry brushes. One wash. One red, one blue, one yellow, one black, one white, one skin tone, and a lighter skin tone. Primer. Clippers. One dull knife, one sharp knife. Paper towel. Wet palette. Or a, a friend. friend. It can be an and instead of an or. Let's get into it. Your, Your friend. friend. There is a deep fundamental truth that many people will try and hide from you. Not everything is for everyone. We would like to believe we are being a friend to you by asking you one thing before going on. Is this what you truly want? Do you want to get into the miniature painting hobby because it is a time intensive hobby, which is a massive rabbit hole? Now are we saying drop your wargaming hobby? No. Games Workshop did research into their customer base and put them into six categories. Casual players, competitive players, diorama makers, painters, law readers, and collectors. If you just want to play, just build miniatures, just convert miniatures, and so on, that is okay. There is nothing wrong with that. Let's say there are even big tournaments where you have to have painted minis. There are thousands of commissioned painters around the world and hobbyists who simply want to paint more. You can pay these people to paint your models for you. There is no shame in it. Your hobby is your own. With that, let's move move on to your, your hobby, hobby friend. friend. When I first wrote this as an article, I wrote, easy for you to say. People at the bottom of the totem pole will often say that because they are looking at a mountain. And it would be easier for me to start from scratch than you because of one reason. I could ask friends for help. A brush here, a paint there, and suddenly you're back in the game. Having a friend in the hobby is the first thing we suggest you acquire because one, maybe as we mentioned before, maybe this side of the hobby isn't for you. And if they will be kind enough to let you try, maybe you may discover it's not for you. Before you start painting, paint with your friend. The other reason is this. Better than a thousand days of diligent study is one day with a great teacher. Japanese proverb. This is a video. Well, duh. No, I'm pointing something out. What is that? This is all an illusion. We can interact, but they can never interact with us. Oh, that is why we are responding back and forth to show that sometimes you need that. That back and forth? Exactly. Painting is a physical skill. No amount of YouTube videos will change that. You need to practice and someone who has knowledge of the hobby can help you out with that more than any other video. Sure, some videos may speak to you more than any other, but only real human interaction will see how you hold a brush, if you're too aggressive with a technique, if you are too passive and letting paint dry on the brush, and so on and so on. It doesn't matter if they are not that advanced, Having a sounding board will vastly improve your skills. If you don't know anyone, that's what friendly local gaming stores are for. This is why, if possible, you should be getting as much of your starting gear from a local store because they will be invested in helping you. But remember that friendly part. If they don't have that, don't bother. Brushes. Brushes. Look outside hobby stores for brushes. But you just said- I know, this is important. Often hobby stores will mark up perfectly normal brushes. You want a small, medium and large brush. In terms of paint brushes, they would be zero, one and two size brushes. Now every area is different. I suggest staying away from the online market because of one thing, this is a physical hobby. I think just being able to physically see the brushes helps a lot. There are two different companies Companies and sets we would recommend. Israel Sable Recab Brushes. Sable brushes hold their shapes very well and keeping a good tip is extremely important to hobby painting. I have found them to be very affordable at those sizes and they're sable brushes. The more you get into miniature painting, the more you will find people rave about sable brushes. But if you learn on them, 
it will be a lot easier for you. You will find that at art stores, they are very affordable because they are based off the size of the brush instead of the reputation of the brand. The other would be... Vallejo Torre Detail Set, size 0, 1, and 2 paintbrushes. Vallejo is a known hobby brand. However, the primary reason we recommend this is affordability. However, there is another reason. That reason being, they are synthetic brushes. Some people are vegans, some people don't like the idea of animal brushes. We aren't here to make statements one way or the other. Just recommend the best products we know of. Now, if you're starting out, you have to remember this. You want a small, medium, and large brush. In terms of paint brushes, they would be 0, 1, and 2 size brushes. Why, Why do, do we you want, want these, these brushes? brushes? You want to start out with these sizes because they are the best sizes in our estimation for a beginner to start painting with. You should always start off with your largest brush if possible, but if you feel that it will be too big, you go smaller and then the same again. Often you could paint a whole model with the exception of the face details with the number two brush. Remember, it's not about the size, it's about control. <laughs> Be quiet, woman. Well, he's not wrong. <laughs> Having control over your largest brush is what is going to make you a better painter. If you can always use your largest brush, once you can no longer have that level of control, that's when you go smaller. Dry, Dry brushes. brushes. Dry brushes are brushes designed not to have a belly with paint held there, but instead have paint on the bristles, which is barely moist. So the kind of brush you want is extremely different. Most dry brushes are chisel-edged horsehair or hog hair brushes, but some are more synthetic now. My favorite is Citadel Medium Dry Brush. However, this is 100% my bias and old habits coming through. Expense-wise, all of the Citadel brushes are over-costed. However, there are dry brushes that you should get. They come from an unexpected market, the makeup market. This next sentence is something we want you to write down. We are serious. Jessup 15 set Zinfandel T284. I am serious. Write that down. Not on your mobile phone. Get pen and paper and write it down. Pen, not pencil. This is a product you will come back to again and again if you start painting seriously. We have bought so many of these sets. One, because I'm not the best at taking care of my dry brushes because of how they're used. And two, they are just that good. $30 AUD, Australian dollars for 15 brushes. You simply can't beat that value. Jessup 15 set Zinfandel T284. Now we are not sponsored, we are a hobby channel. You think the literal million views in one day side of the YouTube even notices us? It's just a good deal. There literally isn't anything we know that is better than this. Makeup brushes give a smoother, less harsh effect than that of hobby dry brushes. But hobby dry brushes have their place to get you started. When you're dry brushing, think of them as your base and your makeup brush as your layering. Why, Why do you, you want, want these, these brushes? brushes? Dry brushing will be your first step in understanding the miniature painting hobby. While miniature painting will have other techniques found in other hobbies such as layering, blending, and so on and so on, dry brushes usefulness is unique to hobby painting. It will instantly transform scales, fur, and chain mail into what it is meant to look like. This is an important lesson. With painting, there's no such thing as cheating. Either you get the result or you do not. It doesn't matter if someone spends hours highlighting each individual scale or somebody simply scrapes a dried hog hair brush and gets a similar result in seconds. Time is the currency of life. Spend it well. Paint. Paint. One red, one blue, one yellow, one black, one white, one skin, one a shade lighter, and a wash paint. Before we get into hobby brand recommendations, first we are going to swap things around. And why do we do this part? Because most people say something like, don't listen to them, just get what your army has. Why, why do, do you, you want, want these paints? paints? Well, the first lot should be easy. You want red, yellow, and blue, as well as black and white for one reason. You can make any color you would like with these. Unfortunately, this hobby thrives on selling the unnecessary. There is a very specific reason why we want you to start out with these colors. Color mixing should become second nature to you. This should always be the answer. I can mix that rather than where is my X? Mixing colors should be second nature to you for two reasons. 
The first one is as a beginner painter, you want to save money as much as you can. The second reason is it will make you a better painter. There is literally no downside to having this as a natural skill. The last two points are simple. You want your skin tone, a shadow color and a highlight color. Skin is hard to paint because we interact with it so often. Skin will tell you if someone is healthy or sick or if they have a bad diet. We unconsciously collect a massive amount of data on skin. So you should get your skin tone. For me, I would use from the Games Workshop or Warhammer line, otherwise known as the Citadel Paint line. Why do they have so many names? Night Questor Flesh and Cadian Flesh Tone. Whereas Cal would use Cadian Flesh Tone as his shadow color and Blade One Flesh as his skin tone. It doesn't matter what your skin tone is, this is what you should start out with. You will have a quick and easy reference guide being able to look at your own skin tone. This will be a massive advantage for you because painting other skin tones will be something you will learn, but you will be able to both consciously reference your own skin and unconsciously know when something doesn't look right. Finally, the wash. A lot of painters used to say this back in the day. It's talent in a bottle or skill in a bottle or liquid skill, some variation of that. Like was said about dry brush brushing, it will instantly bring out the raised areas. Washers will instantly bring out the recessed areas and will allow you to instantly see where things should be shadowed. It should be applied thinly and in areas where it pulls, it should be wicked away. Once again, there is no such thing as cheating. If you can get the results quickly, you should do it. Time is the currency of life. Spend it well. What, what to get. get. Lots of people have lots of opinions about paint brands and people are often extremely tribal when it comes to paint brands. We are attempting to give our most unbiased view that we can. The most important thing for you is availability. Can you get this paint easily? And once again, in your area, meaning in hobby shops around you. Games Workshop slash Warhammer. Positives, availability slash accessibility and range. Negatives, cost, black and white paints are extremely poor and very stupid names. The Games Workshop range is great for one reason. You can get it anywhere there are model kits sold. People would really have to go very out of their way to not sell these items. Additionally, though I don't like the way it's structured, Games Workshop has an inbuilt structure of showing how to paint. The bases are thicker and have more pigment in them, whereas the layers are lighter and have less pigment in them and are designed to layer lightly. However, if you simply thin your paints, then those base colors just mean you have more paint because you have more pigment. Additionally, these paints, be it because of copyright reasons or because they wish to keep the hobby insular, have the most stupid names in the universe. Want to talk about the hobby with someone outside of it? Well, hope for the best and expect the worst because you are going to be talking about gut rip of flesh and flash gets yellow as well as warp lightning. Oh, and guess what color warp lightning is because it is isn't blue. Whatever you do, do not get the Warhammer paint and tool set. For the cost of what you get, it is not worth it at all. If you are going to get the Citadel Paint Rage, get these instead. Mephiston Red, McCrag Blue, Everland Sunset, Corvus Black and Corex White, Your Skin Tones, One Darker and One Lighter, Null and Oil Wash. Army Painter, Positives, Availability, Accessibility, Range, Communication, Negatives. Cost. Personal preference. So the first thing I will give to the Army Painter is their communication. It's fantastic. It's amazing. They'll tell you exactly what you need to know. Their social media team is great. I wrote a comment on YouTube, not with this few thousand subs channel, but with just the Your Name channel. He means his personal account. And I honestly wasn't expecting it. Dropper bottles are almost always a plus. Much better than Games Workshop's paint pots. Cost is an issue. There are now a dollar more than Games Workshop's paint in Australia. And if you know anything about Australian pricing, that is an achievement. Personally, I am not a fan of the consistency of the paints. However, personal preference is everything. If you can make something work for you, then do it. The other issue is their fan base is just about as intense as Games Workshop's crowd. If you are getting into the Army Painter range, either get an Army Painter War Paints starter set or... Dragon Red, Demon Yellow, Viking Blue, Matte White, Matte Black, and Your Skin Tones, one darker and one lighter. But be careful with their range. Their skin tones often have a lot of orange in them, making them feel plastic-like. 
and Army Painter Strong Tone. Though not a black wash, but a brown wash, Army Painter's washes have been perhaps one of the most consistent formulas for years, and it's a great go-to and more of an all-rounder than null and oil wash. Scale 75. Positives, packaging and quality. Negatives, cost, packaging and availability. So I really love Scale 75 paints, absolutely adore them. However, they're different from every other single miniature paint that I have used in a critical way. They use a gel medium instead of the standard liquid medium. This means that they will handle it in a different way from every other paint I have experienced. However, they are extremely smooth and have an amazing coverage. That doesn't mean that they don't have downsides. They are by far the most expensive paints thus far of the paints listed. Except maybe not now anymore after the army paint a price rise. And you are pretty lucky if you get them stocked in your area. We have only ever gotten them through shopping online and you may have noticed how against that we are. Additionally, this one is both a plus and a minus at the same time. Most of the time when you have access to them, they are sold in packs. Scale 75 flesh tones, wood and leather, and so on and so on. This I find to be quite a bonus because they pack up quite neatly and they aren't as lost in the sea of paints that Cal has. Mm. I like to be organized and Cal is nothing but chaos so this is a bonus but not everyone sees it that way. I'm not all chaos. If you were to get this range get scale color essential paint set and null and oil. Paint, paint range, range discussion. discussion. This is the end of our paint range discussion when it comes to our recommendations. Because these are paints that we have used extensively. It is our sincere belief that we are giving our most honest and genuine opinion with those previous three paint ranges. While I and Sunny have used other color ranges, we have not used them to the extensive degree that we have used these paint ranges. We have used the Vallejo paints and we have been very impressed by them. And we have used Duncan's Too Thin Coats. For some of the more popular brands you may know of. But we have also used things such as Green Stuff World paints. P3 and Turbo Nerd. However, we can't give our recommendations positively or negatively when it comes to these. We believe that you should try a range extensively before you judge it. Especially on a platform such as this. We stand by everything we have said so far, and it wouldn't be fair to you if we made a whole spiel about what you should start out with, with products that we don't truly believe in or have tested out thoroughly. And we will only not recommend something if it has earned that reputation. With that being said, don't, don't start, start with, with contrast, contrast paints. paints. This is a controversial statement. If you are new to the hobby, you don't know that. But people will recommend it along with more advanced techniques like xenothol painting, underpainting, and slap chop, not realizing that that advice could be the reason that you stop painting. Or never grow as a painter. Additionally, we are also not recommending contrast clones like instant paints, speed paints, anything like that. The reason for this is because contrast paint does not handle like normal paint. Its consistency is counterintuitive to the fundamentals of painting. It handles like soapy water not like paint. And you cannot simply just paint over the same area with contrast paint and fix your mistakes. If someone says that they are lying, first you must apply a base coat over it, then apply the contrast over that and hope that it matches. We are not saying that you can't get good results with contrast paint. With what it is and how it works, it's antithetical to learning how to paint well. So if you're starting from scratch, don't, Don't start, start with, with contrast, contrast paints. paints. You may have noticed that all of this does not match the tone of the rest of the video. The reason for that is that contrast paint advocates are cult-like. They don't care about your growth as a painter. They don't care if you stay in the hobby. Because it's become part of their identity. Okay, we're going to calm down now for a minute. The reason why we became so hyperactive is because we needed to hammer that home. We had a shot that had over 100,000 views covering this exact topic, and the commenters were nothing short of abusive, unreasonable, and cult-like. Contrast paints are a tool, and in our opinion, they are a tool for more advanced painters or at the very least, intermediate painters. Contrast painters will recommend contrast paints to get easy and instant results. However, many of the techniques used before you even apply the contrast paint are more advanced. 
Techniques like dry brushing may seem simple, but channels like artist Opus show the difference between a beginner applying this technique and a master of this technique. With dry brushing, people naturally move the brush up and down, but what you actually want to be doing is moving only in downward strokes and in focused areas, and this is just the prep before you even apply the contrast paint. Alternatively, you could use an airbrush technique known as zenithal painting. Zenithal means from above. A base coat of black and then a zenithal paint or a paint from above will truly allow a contrast to shine. I hope you can see that we don't say this idly. Like at the start when we said, if you don't want to do painting as part of this hobby, that's okay. But if you have watched this far, we believe that you do want to start painting. And because of that, we truly believe that starting purely with contrast paints will handicap you as a painter. After painting 10 to 20 models, we think now is the time that you can start trying contrast paint. During that time, you will have developed much better brush control and you will have much better ideas of how paint works. 10 to 20 models may sound like a lot, but you'll be surprised at how quickly you'll be able to finish them. Let's move on to wet, wet palette. palette. Using a wet palette will make you a completely different painter. And unlike contrast paints, it should be used from the start of your painting journey. How a wet palette fundamentally works is by cooling and hydrating your paint so it will last longer. However, there are risks of it separating your paint by adding too much fluid to your paint and separating the pigments in your paint. This can be avoided by using a wet palette correctly. We are quickly going to go over how to make your own wet palette and how to use it correctly. Wet palettes are a sponge or sponge-like substance that will retain water with a separator of a semi-permeable material. Most homemade wet palettes are simply a cloth and baking tray paper. This allows water to cool and flow into your paint, preventing it from drying and allowing you more time with painting. However, there is a tiny bit bit more to their construction. We recommend a thin piece of reusable Tupperware. In Australia, there is a great brand called Systema, which has a great clip lock system, but any container with a clip lock system is great. Then get some oil-free non-woven dishcloth. These may go by domestic wipes, kitchen cloth, or any number of other names. Now get a wet wipe. Fold the kitchen cloth till it fits in your container and the wet wipe so that it is only two to five millimeters high. Near enough is good enough. This isn't fine German engineering. Place the wet wipe on top of the cloth and then the baking tray paper on top of the wet wipe. Add water, then press down, drain the excess water, then wipe with a paper towel across your baking tray paper gently. Now you have your very own wet palette. There are wet palettes you can buy. However, this should be the lowest on your priority list of items to buy as you can make this one at the cost of some simple kitchen items you probably have at home. At a certain point in life, convenience outweighs money and you may simply wish to buy a wet palette and that's fine. But make your own first so you understand the principles behind it. And when you use your brand new one with its own pre cut sheets, you avoid the mistakes talked about above by making those steps of creating your own wet palette a habit. Model, Model construction. construction. If you are getting into this hobby, you are probably going to have to make your models from sprues at some point in time. If you are to do that, there are a few things to keep in mind. Sprues are created through heating plastic and pouring it into a mold. This mold is covered in what is known as a release agent. Release agents are oils specially designed to cover mold to help avoid the plastic sticking to them. Oil and water don't mix. You may remember this from your very basic chemistry. Thus. This means one thing, paint will not mix with it. We will get to how you get your paint to stick to models in the primer part, but first you have to help things along. When you get a new model, make this your new habit. I wish you would make this your new habit. Shh. When you bring your model home, take it out of its box and then wash it in warm soapy water with a toothbrush. Nothing so harsh as to damage the model on the sprue or have anything fall off the sprue. Gentle, gentle. Then put it in your dish rack and wait for it to dry. Then put it back into its box. Over the years, you will thank me for forming this habit. 
as it will mean that your primer will stick to the model much more easily. And your paint will stick more easily as well. If you are a younger gentleman or lady, please have a parent with you when you start constructing your models. You will be working with chemicals that can be harmful and sharp objects. These are nothing to be afraid of when handled with care, but you must be careful and your parents know best. Now let's move on to clippers. clippers. Flat edge hobby clippers. This is the item you're looking for. Now, many brands will say that they are the best from the Citadel brand to the God Hand. Yes, that's what it's really called. However, to start out, all you need is flat edge hobby clippers. The reason for this is simple. When you cut with clippers, you're applying a tremendous amount of force to the area. Having a flat area means the area will be sheared without any deformations. So what you want to do is have your flat edge pointed towards the model when you cut to prevent any deformations to the model itself. Your goal when cutting the model is two things. The first thing is to do no damage to the model. To do this, you often want to cut slightly away from the model so that you do not cause those deformations we spoke about before. The second thing, and now it may sound ridiculous, but trust me if you have hobbied enough, you will know that I am not kidding, and that is to keep the model. What do I mean by that? We weren't kidding about the level of force applied when you cut the model. One unfortunate and common hobby accident is the flying model. When you cut the model, be sure to have a firm grip, but not a crushing one, on the piece you are cutting out. If you do not, it may go to corners of the room unknown. Trust us, we know from experience, especially the more rare, unique, and irreplaceable the item is in our experience. Once you have cut out a piece, you can cut that dangling protrusion again. However, if you want to avoid damaging your model, the next tool is a must. Knives. You will need one sharp knife and one dull knife. All that is required for these knives before. is that you have a hobby knife. These are knives which have reusable blades. They may be known as an exacto knife, a utility knife, a precision knife, or hobby knives. A knife is a knife. We don't know of any brands that are truly horrible enough that you have to stay away from them. It's all a matter of personal preference. To get one dull knife and one sharp knife, simply buy two knives. Through use, one of these will become dull. This will be your dull knife. Eventually, it will become too dull to use and you will need to replace the blade. Now, this will become your sharp knife. All that matters is that you have one dull knife and one sharp knife. Dull knives can be used to scrape away mold lines on polystyrene plastic or high impact polystyrene, aka hips. However, not every model is made from hips. Models that come from Kickstarters and many D&D models are PVC plastic. How can you tell if a model is PVC plastic? or hips. A good rule of thumb is that polystyrene models will be on a sprue and PVC models will be whole when you receive them. Remember that each model has different qualities, so the way in which you clean each of them will be different. I very much dislike removing the mold lines from PVC plastics, as PVC plastics is much more flexible, which means if you scrape it like a polystyrene model, it will instead tear which can be quite ugly indeed. In fact, what you want to do with PVC models is more akin to shaving them with the sharp knife. However, this risks losing detail as well. Use the sharp knife to shave off those PVC mold lines or don't if you fear losing detail from your model. Use the sharp knife to remove knobbly and nibbly bits left over from assembly. The sharp knife can be used for more precision removal. Some of the times those bits of plastic can be quite persistent and stick to the model that you are working on. A quick flick will remove those persistent dangly threads. This is almost a common sense for how you should use each. Remember, sometimes your model's quality will determine how much or how little effort you should put into its construction and its painting. Sometimes there will be no helping certain sculpts. Some of the times, as a modeler and as a painter, you're fighting the sculpt. Don't fight battles you can't win. Time is the currency of life. Spend it well. Glues. Glues. When it comes to glues and miniature models, it will very much depend on the material of the model you are using. While there are some universal joiners like super glue, super glue is more brittle than most glues. So when you can use plastic glue, that is preferable. Super glue is the most universal glue, and what you are looking for is the smallest bottles you can, rather than specialist bottles. The reason for this is you will always have more reliability 
in a mass market product and lower cost, like the makeup brushes we suggested earlier, rather than hobby specific products. On the other hand, issues with super glue that people will often have is using too much. The simple way to avoid this is do not pour it directly onto your models. Instead, pour onto a resistant surface such as baking tray paper, the gloss side of a piece of card, or anything that has some sort of resistance in your hobby space that can be thrown away. Then simply touch the object to the glue rather than pouring it on directly. The simple solutions are the best. Plastic glue is the most popular product in the hobby because of how it bonds materials. This is for high impact polystyrene, IPS. Plastic glue is more a solvent than a glue. What it does is it melts both plastic parts together. In fact, a popular gap filler is made using this process called sprue goo. This is created by cutting up spare bits of sprue and putting it into the plastic glue which dissolves the plastic, creating a goo-like material. For plastic glue, I highly recommend two products from the same company, Tamiya's Plastic Cement and Tamiya's Extra Thin Plastic Cement. The main reason for it is the brush and the aforementioned quality in the name, thin. This will allow you to glue your models together with a greater degree of control. Plastic glue has additional uses in the hobby due to how it melts things. If there is a rougher surface on your model, you can use it to smooth things out. However, the best way to do this is with thin glue and Spartan use of the glue. Remember, you can't take things back with this process. Once it's melted, it's melted forever. Now, different plastics will require different types of glues. For example, ABS plastic will require ABS plastic glue and so on. However, you are unlikely to be dealing with this kind of plastic. If you ever have any confusion, the best place is that friendly local gaming store where you picked your items up. The final product we're going to talk about when it comes to bonding miniatures is two-part epoxy glue. Now, this is a much more difficult product to work with, and we do not recommend it for beginners. However, if you really need something to stick, and you're truly having a great, terrible time of it, this is what you need to find. But we cannot say this enough. This is a product of last resort, and you shouldn't be using it as a beginner if you can avoid it. If you intend to use it, please look up how to use your particular one. It will be time well spent. Paper, paper towel, towel and, and other, other basics. basics. A good rule is to think of your hobby space as a workshop rather than a play space. In this way, you should have many basic tools there for unforeseen situations. Paper towel is our must if you can only take away one product from this list. However, this is our list of mundane objects you should have in your hobby area. Q-tips or cotton buds, wet wipes, baking tray paper, paper clips, toothpicks, paddle pop sticks or coffee stirrer sticks, and blue tack, otherwise known as poster putty or simply tack. Now we are only going to provide one use for each of these products. The reason is quite simple. These products aren't specific products. They are universal products and you should have them within arm's reach for any number of situations that come up rather than for specific purposes. Paper towel. A small piece of paper towel can be used to soak excess super glue away from the problem area rather than wiping it away. Soaking it is the best way to collect it in my experience. Q-tips. These are useful for any number of situations, but it's usually when I have stuffed up and I don't want to use my clumsy fingers to get into somewhere. Wet wipes. Wet wipes give the right level of moisture to wipe things away without giving harsh scratching. Baking tray paper. It's good for collecting excess material from your basing process without creating a mess and allowing you to reuse that material without waste. Paper clips. These can be used to unclog dropper bottles and as the pins to pin parts of models together and a variety of other purposes. Toothpicks. When used in the right way, it can be used to give realistic scratches to your models or damaged leather or damaged armor alike, as well as a variety of other uses. Remember, these products are multi-use products. They are not for specific purposes. That doesn't mean they won't be useful. However, any long-time hobbyist will look at this list and say, yes, there are things here that I must have at my hobby desk. Primers. Primers.
Even though this is one of the most important steps, you may be wondering why it is almost at the end of the video. It is also the least sexy and generates the least interest when it comes to painting. However, it is literally your foundational paint. Primer is an acrylic paint with a very strong bond. This will allow your paint to stick to your model. It comes in a variety of forms, however, they can be broadly split into two camps. Rattle cans slash spray cans or airbrush. You need two primers, at least one black and one white, or one airbrush, compressor, one black primer, and one white primer. However, what we truly recommend is this, airbrushing. Now, many people will warn you against this, but we have done the math. Getting a cheap airbrush, primer, and a small compressor, after buying your second lot of spray cans, you will be out of pocket compared if you started with airbrushing. When we say get rattle cans, we aren't just saying get any old can from a local hardware store. We recommend hobby paint. We really like the Vallejo spray cans if you are going to go with spray cans. However, once again, we recommend spray cans you have access to. And if that means using Citadel cans, which are expensive but effective, we recommend that because having access to the resources of the shop is critical. Games Workshop has a very generous refund policy when things go wrong. We are in no way suggesting you exploit this. However, they will very much hold your hand when it comes to starting out in the hobby, at least with their models bought from their stores with their paints, which are big caveats. The next part with spray cans can be difficult. As we mentioned about zenithal painting, we recommend that everyone starts out with this because it very much takes advantage of the natural parts of this hobby. A zenithal paint job simply means sprayed from above. So what do you do? Spray your miniature black and then spray at a 75 degree to 90 degree angle from above white until your miniatures highlights have been detailed from this process. Why, Why do, do you need, need primer? primer? Why is this important if you're not going to be taking advantage with a semi-transparent paint, ink or wash? The reason is simple. You will see quite naturally how the model should look with its highlights with almost no effort needed. This allows you to understand where the lights and shadows should be painted on your model. You can take pictures of this on your phone for easy reference and look back at it when you are looking at your model and know roughly where the light and dark parts are. Alternatively, you can simply do what Sunny did when she started out with painting. Painting the darker parts with darker colors, the mid-tones with mid-tone colors, and then the lighter parts with lighter colors. Either way, this gives you a paint by numbers style guide to where your paint should fall on the model. The, the lie. lie. This is not actually how we would start out. We would get one or two cheap airbrushes. Why? Because airbrushes, especially when you're starting out, can be... Uh, how the... Is it clogged Listen again? to the soothing songs. There is no I Australian losing his mind Tell using new and creative I'm insults. Here. Airbrushing can be a bit more difficult to get into than the rattle cans, but far, far, far less expensive in the long run. And you will get better results. However, I remember having more than a few issues when I started out. That is okay. It's okay to have issues. This is why we recommend these two guides. How to Airbrush for Beginners by Kamui Cosplay and Know Nothing About Airbrushes? Start Here by Miniac. The reason we recommend these two, well, Benny from Kamui Cosplay, is more in line with our philosophy of start out cheap. Not the exact path we would follow, but has a lot of good basic information. Scott has a much more academic and technical breakdown, which can be intimidating for a beginner, but it's also reassuring in our opinion. I told you I'm okay. Can I'm fine. Oh, yeah. All right, kinda... here's the big thing. All right, there's a big caveat about airbrushes. Don't buy an expensive airbrush. <sighs> I'm sorry, but you're probably going to trash your first airbrush, even if you're being careful. What we would actually recommend starting out may not seem beginner friendly at all, but it truly is. Getting two shitty airbrushes and getting at least three neutral colors, a dark, mid and light color, and we recommend getting them as alcoholic solution paints. If there are some non-beginners watching, I'm almost guaranteeing some of them are screaming at the screen right now. So understand, some people may think this is not the best advice. And when we say we think that they think it's not the best, they think it is terrible. But we will explain why it is good advice. Here's the thing. 
Most people have access to the outside, meaning not inside. Your airbrush should be connected by a hose. You can take that airbrush outside. That's what we have done. A spray booth and any number of other fancy contraptions are great. But as we have mentioned before, the simple solutions work best. Additionally, alcoholic solutions bite into models harder. I'm no chemist, so I can't explain the technical side of it. But what I can tell you is that while other solutions may have trouble sticking to your model, alcoholic solutions won't. We use SMS, but we understand this is an Australian brand and not everyone has access to it. But what they are is acrylic lack of paints. And if you look for that, you should be able to get something similar or may even have them in your area. We mentioned that some people would be angry at us for recommending lacquer paints. Why? The smell. The smell is intense, but you get used to it, or I have. However, we do our priming outside in a small undercover area. So that's important to remember. But the other thing is that lacquer paints require a different lot of cleaners, paint thinners, and so on. This would usually clog up your airbrush, but with lacquers, it'll clean it right out. However, that would also eat some parts like O-rings with these cheaper brushes. It isn't a problem. They they don't have as many moving parts because they're made on the cheap. This is actually why we recommend a cheap brush and lack of paints because you are doing it exclusively for priming. And second of all, you step outside of the prescribed realm of hobbying. As we have hinted at before, hobbying has a very set prescribed rules and with this next section we are going to break a lot of them and for good reason. Because rules are imposed for no reason at all. If you want to flourish, experiment until you have found your tools, then you can become the master of them. Next we also lied about the colors we would get. We wouldn't only get two, we would get three neutrals. This is so you could do a complete undercoat and then your next color and your next for a smoother transition. Airbrushing allows you to naturally understand highlighting. It will click with a part of your brain that the brush painting simply won't. However, that isn't going to be the case if you go straight black to white as much as if you have more subtle transition. So we recommend three neutrals. This could come in the form of a very dark gray, a mid-tone gray, and a white, or browns. Browns are composite or compound colors and are formed from different amounts of every primary color or a secondary color in its opposite. So like white and gray, it reflects all light back at you, but unlike white, it isn't reflecting all light back at you equally. So your other option would be to use a dark brown, a mid brown, and a bone or buff color. Sunny, this is your brainchild. Can you help explain the the benefits better? Starting with a deep brown is better than a black because if you do use transparent paints over it, it will actually show up. And if you don't use transparent paints, you won't have to layer so much to get your color to show. Second, neutral grays as well as black white tend to be colder. When you get into color temperatures, you will understand this better, but in short, it makes them look less flat. It will really help colors such as yellows and oranges pop out in a more subtle and natural way. And it will be better base for, unsurprisingly, browns, leathers, skins, and hair will come up in a more natural way. I would disagree with Sunny about starting out. I would still recommend the dark gray, mid-tone gray, and white. But what I want you to see here is there will always be disagreements on the better way to do things, even if it's here on this channel. But we do agree on one thing. Layering these three will help you inherently understand the fundamentals of painting a lot more than you think. Painting is an unnatural process. We layer paint to create the illusion we desire. A zenithal sprayed at 75 degrees to 90 degree angle will help you understand because you will literally see the process unfold before your eyes. You will see some areas remain dark and some areas become lighter. This means you will see the illusion made real. This will be the first process of painting. Your first process of painting will be making that illusion real. It's very magical. Everything falls into place without you having to think about it. Finally, let's move on to recommendations. Recommendations. This is something that you shouldn't really do as YouTubers. Recommend people who are far bigger than you because you have no likelihood of reciprocation. The reason we do this is for one reason. We think that it is useful. The reason why we say you should start out with a friend is because they can fill the gaps we cannot. We are what has been described as 
broad tutorials. However, we go rather deep into color theory, color psychology, and design theory. It would be insanity to say that one channel would be able to cover all of the hobby. So if you don't have a friend in the hobby yet, we hope that these recommendations fill that void. First up, Brushstroke Brush Painting, Painting Guides. Guides. We recommend watching Brushstroke's Painting Guides, How to Thin Your Paint. This video has over half a million views as of the time of recording, and there is a reason for that. It is simply that good. Before we go on, full disclosure, I know Brushstroke, and he has had time for me during some very down times. However, there is a reason this has half a million views, as we said before. We recommend Brushstroke's painting guides for one reason above all, his recipe guides. As his name implies, he is exclusively a brush painter, and for that reason, he has some of the smoothest paint jobs out there. However, he doesn't densely pack his information like us. Instead, he presents it like a school teacher with examples as he goes. However, we do have one little game that we play with him. If our video leads you to his stuff, just make a comment with that smooth and then leave a peach next to it so he can know who is responsible for that. Brush next. Next, Zumikito Miniatures. We recommend you watch Zumikito Miniatures Painting Explained in 5 Minutes Playlist. Each of these videos have over 200,000 views for a reason. Zumikito follows a similar philosophy to ours, do not waste people's time. We try and pack as much information as we can in as short a period of time as we can, and so does he. You will not be skipping through these videos. You will be rewinding and rewatching parts. Trust us when we say that it is often not the case with YouTube. You are often skipping through content to find what you need to find. Treasure this as a resource and return to it. It is time well spent. Finally, we recommend Vince Ventrella. Unlike before, this is a general recommendation, and there's a reason we put it third. Vince is perhaps the world's hardest working hobbyist, and he covers almost every single topic under the sun. Additionally, he does it well, but Vince is very dry, which may be a turn off for some of you. What he does is he gives information like no one else does. It's deep, informative, and dry. For some people, that's perfect. It's very useful, and the level of knowledge he gives is undeniable. Now we will recommend some of our content for beginners. What, what are, are you painting, painting now? Or Waypan. There are two things that we think are fantastic for beginners or more intermediate painters. How to get better at painting. This series covers broad topics which aren't often covered. They are hyperreality, that is to say, understanding verisimilitude, understanding color, and why references are important, as of the recording of this video. These will help you more broadly understand the hobby rather than improving one specific skill or technique. Then there is the color series, which is about understanding color. We cover color harmony and how to use it, in depth color psychology, practical application, and color temperature. Despite these being some of our more popular videos, they are some of our earlier videos. We have to re-record them because the audio isn't 100%. Our philosophy is just start now, regardless of how good you are, and you will improve. We try to practice what we preach, and we have fixed our audio now. Just like you will improve. Non-hobbyist non recommendations. recommendations. One of the biggest things we mentioned before is that people get stuck in a rut of hobby content and don't explore outside of it. You need to explore outside of the hobby if you wish to grow as a painter. There are people who know far more than hobbyists about specific subjects which you can learn a great deal from. To ease you into this, we will start with someone who is an occasional Warhammer hobbyist and then go more and more outside of it. Black, Black Magic, Magic Craft. Craft. We recommend that you watch Black Magic Crafts, Make Modular Rubber Roads for Tabletop Gaming, and Make Easy Flexible Rivers for Tabletop Gaming. Black Magic Crafts started out as a D&D terrain maker and has branched into Warhammer terrain making because I will spoil the big secret for you. They are the exact same thing. This is one of the secrets that brains don't want you to know. You can use the same terrain for multiple games. There is literally no reason to buy all of the terrain if you don't want to. He will show you how to make cheap and easy terrain, which will work for D&D &D as well as it will for Warhammer. Luke, Luke Towen. We recommend you watch Luke Towen, Ultra Realistic Trees. 
cheap trees that look amazing. Luke is the first of a series of people we are going to recommend called Scale Modelers. These people focus on creating realistic looking scale model scenes. These people are an amazing resource for learning how to do terrain. However, unlike Black Magic Craft, their goal is quite different. It is to create realistic looking terrain rather than usable terrain. That is quick and easy. However, that is some people's goal with hobby, to create the best looking things rather than usable things. If that is something you are interested in, take a look. Barbatos Rex. Rex. Like Vince Ventrella, this is a general recommendation, but a little different. Barbatos Rex is a channel we recommend for what he is and the simple fact that he exists. That is product testers. Hobbying is expensive, like stupidly expensive. And if you're going to try something out, the best thing to do is to see what other people say. That is one of the most important things in this hobby, making informed decisions. This is why we recommend such a bare bones start, because it adds up. As we are writing this, Duncan Rhodes is releasing his third line of paints, and they are currently selling at 192 USD for 60 paints, or for us, 293 AUD. This is not only considered a good price, but an exceptionally good price. In Australian dollars, that is $4.88 per paint, and $3.20 in American. These are what people consider deals, whereas a deal when it comes to craft paint is one dollar Australian per tube. To say this hobby is expensive is an understatement. Final, Final tips. tips. Don't spend money on items you don't have to. Don't buy things before you have finished constructing and painting what you already have. Don't fall for FOMO, fear of missing out. Plan out your purchases. Do what you love not what everyone else likes. Do what brings you happiness, not necessarily what brings you joy, meaning what brings you long-term positive feelings, not short-term. Serotonin over dopamine hits. Finally, Finally this, this hobby, hobby is your own. own. As we said at the very start of the video, if you don't want to paint and only want to play games, do that. If you only want to paint and not build models, people will do it for money, just like commission painting. If you don't want to do something, don't do it. And even if it means losing someone who would have watched this channel, if that means not doing this hobby at all, that's okay. Conclusion. Conclusion. We should have given you a reason why you need each of the items we listed at the start. But can we ask you something? Can we ask you to return the favor? Unfortunately, the beast that is the YouTube algorithm has been attacking us. We put a tremendous amount of work into this, but you are the ones who hold our fate in your hand. You can defeat the algorithm, and it's simple to do so. Share this video. If you share this video, it tells the algorithm, hey, people are sharing this off platform. Share it more on platform. Thank you. It truly does mean the world to us. Let's conclude by going over those items that you need. Those items are... Three brushes, a small, medium, and large brush, size 0, 1, and 2 brushes. Israel Sable Recab Brushes, or... Vallejo Torre Detail Set, 0, 1, and 2 Paintbrush Set. Dry Brushes. Jessup 15 Set Zinfandel T284. One Wash. Citadel's Null and Oil, or... Army Painter's Strong Tone. One Red, one Blue, one Yellow, one Black, one White, one skin tone and a shade lighter. Clippers. One dull knife and one sharp knife. The glue appropriate for your model. Different models have different glues. Paper towel and other basics. Wet palette. Should be made at home. Primer. Either two rattle slash spray cans, black and white. Or an airbrush, compressor, three colors, black, gray, and white. Or, or one friend. friend. That or can be an end as well. Oh, and there's one habit, if you do it every single day, will make you a great painter. What's that? Keep, Keep those, those brushes, brushes wet. Bye-bye.
remember when we first did this and it was only like 10 minutes long? Oh, yeah. Uh, when we did this one, I thought the more comprehensive I'm making this, the more I feel like we're missing out on stuff. Yeah, I guess that can be true because you can never truly cover everything. There's always going to be something that you could have mentioned, some new trick that you feel could have been relevant. But I think we had to keep it bare basic. I also would have liked to mention the membership stuff and how our membership has STLs, but I don't think that's that helpful for beginners. No, I don't think it will be relevant for them. But, you know, there is one thing that I was like, where do I fit this in, which is our Waypan reviews thing. Mm -hmm. You know, the Facebook group yeah, the that group. we put into every single video that no one ever actually checks out unless we mention it in the video. Yeah, but to be fair, no one's looking at the descriptions ever. Well, hardly anyone makes it here. So I guess if they make it here, they're the right kind of people that we want, aren't and they? And we do hope that you join our Waypan Facebook group because we are very sure it'll help you improve as a painter. All right, guys. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.